Richard Dawkins is a British evolutionary biologist, outspoken atheist, and popular science author. Dawkins is a prominent critic of creationism and intelligent design. He is described as one of the most influential and profound thinkers in the field of evolutionary theory. The following clip has been public for quite some time now. Richard Dawkins is being interviewed in his own home by prior arrangement with a filmmaking crew. Apparently, according to Dawkins' own website, he doesn't know that they have creationist leanings. They ask him a question that both stumps him and enrages him. His stunning 11 seconds of silence is very, very telling. Once this film clip was made public, Dawkins' cronies immediately came to his defense, claiming the clip was a fake and had been manipulated. Following is the clip. Can you give an example of a genetic mutation or, 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 or an evolutionary process which ha can be seen to increase the information in the genome? Can you just stop when I think? I'm recording. Okay. So, what is the truth? This website is Richard Dawkins' own site, his own answer. It is his direct response to this clip. It is found on this site. By his own admission, the clip is genuine. There is no manipulation. On that site, he attempts to answer the question that stumped him in the interview. The question was simple. Scientifically and logically, it could have been answered with yes, and then an example given, or no, we have not yet found such an example. But instead, on his site, Dawkins engages in about five pages of scientific racquetball, bouncing back and forth and intermingling theories to finally arrive at his answer found at almost the very bottom of the page. Following is his answer. After the answer, I will give a layman's interpretation of it. Remember the simple question. Can you give a single example of a genetic mutation that results in an increase in information to the genetic evolutionary process? Dawkins' answer is as follows. The answer in practice is complicated and controversial, all bound up with a vigorous debate over whether evolution is, in general, progressive. I am one of those associated with a limited form of yes answer. My colleague, Stephen J. Gould, tend towards a no answer. I don't think anybody would deny that by any method of measuring there has been a broad overall trend towards increased information content during the course of human evolution from our remote bacterial ancestors. People might disagree, however, over two important questions. First, whether such a trend is to be found in all or a majority of evolutionary lineages. Second, whether even in lineages where there is a clear overall trend over the very long term, it is bucked by so many reversals and re-reversals in the shorter term as to undermine the very idea of progress. This is not the place to resolve this interesting controversy, Dawkins says. Here is the layman's translation of Dawkins' revealing admission. The question, he says, is controversial and complex. He admits the question and the answer is controversial, and he means even among evolutionists. And, he says, it is bound up in vigorous debates among evolutionists. Dawkins says that even renowned evolutionists, such as he and Dr. Gould, disagree on the matter. They not only disagree, but they are diametrically opposed. The two most important considerations that evolutionists have on this topic, Dawkins says, is, number one, is information increase even found at all? That was the question that he never answered. And number two, Dawkins says, even the evidence that might appear to be for it is, by his words, bucked by so many reversals and re-reversals as to undermine, his words, the very idea of progress. So, short and sweet, Dawkins paused in the clip because he could not answer the question. There is no clear-cut example of an increase of information in the genome due to genetic mutations, pure and simple. Yet this teaching of genetic mutations being essential to the evolutionary process is one of the foundations of modern evolution theory. Do you smell the rat of pseudoscientific evolution? 
it seems that Dawkins and many creationists agree. There really is not any clear-cut example of this evolutionary fairy tale. So thank you, Mr. Dawkins, for setting all of that straight in writing and in your own words.